Is FPC's win in Rigby versus Jennings as big a deal as people are making it out to be? Let's go ahead and talk about that. What is up Wolverines and welcome back to the channel. This is actually the second time I'm filming this intro because I was meaning to release this video earlier on, but I released another video by accident. So I'm filming this one over again. Well, part of it at least. My name is John Crump. I'm an investigative journalist and I keep an eye on the 2A space. Like, comment, and subscribe. Visit my Discord. Go ahead and give to the scouts, which you can do down below in the description. Today, we're going to be talking about a lawsuit that FBC filed in my second home state of Delaware. If you don't know, I split my time between Virginia and Delaware. So any type of win in Delaware makes my heart tingle. But is Rigby versus Jennings as big a win as some is making it out to be? And the answer is yes, it is. It is a solid win for FBC. FBC, great job on this. So we're going to go over a little bit about what the lawsuit was about and what the judge said. The lawsuit was filed because Delaware made a law preventing people from completing scary ghost guns. And I like to complete ghost guns, so I do it in Virginia, not really in Delaware, but I would like to do it in Delaware. So this win is a solid win for me, and it's going to be replicated across the country. Basically, what the lawsuit did was sue Delaware over their banning of ghost gun manufacturing. And the judge cited decisively with FPC in the case. Federal District Judge Marilyn Narika said these statutes burden constitutionally protected conduct because possession of firearms and firearm frames and receivers is within the scope of the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms. And the defendant has not shown that these firearms and components are not commonly owned by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. Further, defendant has offered no evidence that these statues are consistent with the nation's history of firearms regulations. And that is big because what this judge has done is applied Bruin to frames and receivers. Does that mean that it's going to knock down the federal law on frames and receivers that the ATF Passed, and I do call it a law because it is a, a de facto law, even though it's actually just a regulation and they're using Chevron deference to pass that regulation, which is insane to me. But whatever. The judge further went on to say a right to keep and bear arms implies a corresponding right to manufacture arms. Indeed, the right to keep and bear arms would be meaningless if no individual or entity can manufacture a firearm. Thus, if possessing untraceable firearms is protected by the Second Amendment, so too is manufacturing them. This is a great decision. What's going to happen now is the state is going to appeal to the circuit court where it'll probably go to a three-judge panel which depending on the makeup of the panel would either go for us or go against us. And then from there, it will probably go to an en banc. Basically what's going to happen if the state loses or FPC loses, they are going to ask for an en banc, which a whole bench will hear. And if that does happen, that the panel decision would be vacated and it's like it never happened. The full bench would decide from there. It would go to the Supreme Court if either side appeals, which I'm sure that they will. This win at the district level is awesome. An unbank hearing, I'm not so sure FBC will get the win there, but it might be a pathway to the Supreme Court. Also, it lays down the groundwork that other people can take 
in repeat in other states that has similar bans, such as New York. So we'll see what happens here, but this is a great win, and we do need to celebrate great wins. Good job, FBC. You're doing great work there, and continue the good work. All right, guys, stay ever vigilant, stay ever free, keep in the fight. I love you so much. Buy popcorn, give to the scouts, join the Discord. I'm out of here. Wolverine's mother. Thank you.